Hi, it's Dwyer. Let's talk NFL football. For sophisticated gamblers, just know that we do sell picks at DwyerVIP.com. I hope you give us a look. I've released here online um, the videos that I made for Week 10 and Week 11. Just give them a look. There'll be a video available for sale at Dwyer VIP for Week 12. Let's uh, talk, without making a pick here, in generalities about the NFL and things you need to look at. Now, I've been saying here online for some time. In fact, there's a video up. It's dated October 25th, 2013. This was last month, before the winning streak, in which I talked about Carolina as being a futures play. Right? Carolina's defense is spectacular. The world is slowly figuring that out. They're still 10 to 1. I consider Carolina to be a better play at this point than teams like the San Francisco 49ers. Right? Understand Cam Newton the last two weeks has beaten the 49ers in San Francisco and the New England Patriots at home. Things are clicking for them. Right, Carolina, quite frankly, brings a physical brand of football to the party. And I'm just here to say that Carolina is a team to keep an eye on. The casinos are giving you leverage. I'm not predicting that they win the Super Bowl. What I'm saying, though, is even at 10 to 1, and keep in mind, I was touting them when they were much higher than this. Look at that October 25th video. But even at 10 to 1, I believe they represent compelling value. Right, let's shift gears. One of my themes this year is that, and I know I'll sound crazy, the Denver Broncos are overrated. Well, let me just say, their last two weeks, folks, they have scored their lowest point totals of the year. This is that time of the year where defenses make adjustments and start catching up to runaway offenses. Right, Julius Thomas isn't really surprising people like he did in September. Right? And so, my point to you is simply the futures line on the Broncos winning it all, a plus 250, is simply preposterous. Understand, the next two weeks, the Broncos play the Patriots in New England, right? And Kansas City in Kansas City. Now, I know those of you, uh, there are many of you out there who will say, well, they've beaten KC. That was at home, scoring their lowest point total of the year. I don't think either of those next two games are gimmies. Understand, too, KC went into their game against Denver with the division lead. All things being equal, if KC wins the rematch, they're back in the division lead. And what I'm telling you here is all things might not be equal. After yesterday's game, New England against Carolina, I wouldn't want to be the team that plays New England next. The Denver Broncos are, right? That's something to consider. Let's talk about the 49ers. You know, it takes a few years for quarterbacks to be able to read defenses fully. Don't be fooled by Andrew Luck or Russell Wilson. Those guys are outliers. Those guys are the exception to the rule. Back in the day, some teams wouldn't even let the quarterback play. Look at the careers of Steve McNair, Carson Palmer, Quarterbacks used to carry clipboards for the first year of their career. Well, now what I want people to realize is Colin Kaepernick right now isn't able to hit his third and fourth receivers with regularity. He has a gun. He's very accurate with the gun. The problem isn't his accuracy or his throwing. Let's be blunt. It's the decision-making that leads to the throw, right? He sees Anquan Bolden. He sees Vernon Davis. 
I'm not sure if he sees anyone else. When Michael Crabtree comes back from a torn Achilles, think about it, the same injury that's kept a fierce competitor like Kobe Bryant off the court in basketball. When Crabtree comes back from a torn Achilles, even if he's able to play, and I would question that, because let's remember, there's being in shape, and then there's being in football shape, right? People coming back from a torn Achilles, don't they have to figure out balance and stuff like that first? You're telling me this young man is going to be in an NFL game and he's going to be playing at the high level at which he played before? Call me a skeptic. But even when he comes back, if you're a quarterback who, in the brief two, three-second window after they snap the ball to you, can only really read one or two receivers, then what difference does it make if you have a third and a fourth receiver? Right? Kaepernick's not seeing the field. He's seeing the first two options. That third and fourth option could be Jerry and Calvin Johnson. Right? I don't think it makes that much difference. I think right now the game is just a tad bit too fast for him. I know I sound hard here online. So be it. We're talking about betting on sports. Hard decisions need to be made. I think the Niners are facing a challenge at this point because while their defense is all that, their offense is having problems. And some of those problems really stem from where in his career their quarterback is. Let's talk about the Colts. And again, I don't mean to rough up too many guys. But when are we going to start calling Trent Richardson a bust? Wasn't this guy the third pick in the NFL draft? By the way, the year he came out, the first two picks, Andrew Luck, RG3. Right? When you see Trent Richardson run, do you think you're watching an RG3 or an Andrew Luck level talent? I don't. In fact, let me say this. I think this is one of the problems with SEC, well, Alabama running backs, right? Eddie Lacy, all I can say is straight line runner to me, not a lot of wiggle, right? Um, you know, the Heisman Trophy winner, can't believe I'm forgetting his name, plays for the Saints, Mark Ingram, straight line runner, not a lot of wiggle. Trent Richardson, straight line runner. Not a lot of wiggle. All I could say is this. These two eyes tell me that the best running back on the Colts is Donald Brown. Right? I question whether the Colts have a good enough rushing attack. They just lost, in my opinion, a future Hall of Fame wide receiver, Reggie Wayne. Right? While T. Y. Hilton and Darius Hayward Bay have speed, Let's just say the Colts look like they are sputtering offensively. They were lucky to win their last game, right? And even though they have a pass rush, Robert Mathis, let's not confuse this Colt defense with the Niner defense or the Carolina Panther defense. So I'll agree. The Colts have the inside track to make the playoffs. No question about it. They have... A great quarterback. I'll agree with that. Right? But my point to you is, if the conversation is on who's going to win the AFC, not who's going to make the playoffs, but who's going to win the AFC, then to me, they're better options. Right? The team in New England comes to mind. The team in Kansas City comes to mind. As I said earlier, in fact, the team in Cincinnati has a shot. You've heard me say I'm a skeptic of the team in Denver. Also add the Colts to that skeptic list. Finally, let me say this. I'm an NFC East guy. You know that I'm a Giants fan. Plain and simple, right? 
I believe the Giants are still in the mix. Now that said, the Philadelphia Eagles seem to have stumbled on something special. Nick Foles is real. That offense is real. Right? If this defense would seem to hold together against the Redskins, but of course I question the Redskins, right? The coach, the team, even the name. I question the Redskins. But I'll say this. The Eagles right now have the jump on everybody in the NFC East. You need to keep an eye on that team. I don't believe it's their year, but I'll say this. The odds they're giving at the casino, 28 to 1. If you look at the Eagles' schedule, and if you realize that some of the teams in their division, right, the Cowboys, for example, have to play the Giants. They're going to be cannibalizing each other. The Eagles have a chance to win that division. And with that team's speed, and it's exemplary, right? LaShawn, Deshaun, and Riley with Brent, right? With that team's speed, and with Nick Foles at quarterback, I think it's worth putting a dollar down right here at the Eagles at 28-1 to 1 to win the NFL. All you're hoping is to get leverage. If the team makes the playoffs, then you can hedge, get back your initial investment, make a small profit. If the team goes on a run, and keep in mind, Lord knows, you have some teams out there with shaky defenses, right? This team is the kind of team with the kind of speed and deep ball capability where they could conceivably upset some teams down the road. Let me hear from you. I hope you give us a look at DwyerVIP.com for our premium picks for week 12. Thanks for stopping by.